Hello, I've mentioned before how productive the 1960s were for single lens reflex cameras. It was a fascinating time. Nikon had launched the Nikon F and other manufacturers were looking at other type of designs and you still had a very active West German camera industry then and the lights of Zeiss and of Vortlander were making fantastically high quality cameras. They had made a whole range of um, viewfinder cameras but there was definitely a demand for this single lens reflex system. Designs were still evolving the um, Zeiss had come out with the Contaflex and there were several models and over the period of between 19 I think about 1958 to 1966 they were almost bringing out a model every year. This model here is the Contaflex Super um, and I was very lucky that a family friend um, gave me this camera. It had belonged to her father since new and she knew I appreciated cameras and I was very pleased to be gifted it. Initially when I first looked at it I thought that's quite nice. I had had similar cameras before. I knew it has, it has this interesting supplementary lens. The lens one element of the lens comes out and you can have ride angle or telephoto supplementary lenses to put onto that. And I have had those and those are quite good fun. When I first looked at this camera, I thought, ah, oh, focusing is here, which is very, very nice. Um, the shutter speed is here. Again, very smooth, very nice. I can see the aperture. It was very common at this time to have the aperture and shutter speed linked, which the thought was it made it easier when you took a photograph. Um, so if you are, let's say, on f8 at 60th, if you want to then go up to 125, it would be then 5.6. 5, 5 so let's say you wanted um, of, um, everything to be in focus and you wanted a large uh, shutter speed of 22, you set it on 22 and of course the shutter speed comes down. So I was doing this and I thought, but how do I change the aperture? And it completely perplexed me. And then I noticed there's a meter here and the meter is a bit like the Nikon um, in that you've got a top meter and a needle through the viewfinder. If I adjust that until the middle, it's adjusting the aperture. So it's actually setting, you are setting your meter. So as I change for the uh, needle, you will see the aperture changing. Okay, so that is how you set your aperture. So it's a really straightforward camera to use. You obviously focus here, Aperture here, shutter here, click. It's a leaf shutter, so it's moderately quiet. That does give a limitation on the speed. The fastest speed of this is 500th of a second. It does have a shoe, so you could put a flash on. Um, the lens which came with the camera is a Tessa 1.2.8 so a really nice size Tessa lens here it has the feel of quality when you are using the camera it feels nice to use it's not the lightest of cameras but it is straightforward to use I have used it I have had very pleasing results from it if we go back to the blue book and the blue book was a book by Wallace Heaton um, and City Cell Exchange Limited who owned uh, who were part of the Wallace Heaton group. Of the 1962 to 1963 book we read of the Contaflex Super size icon 35 mil single lens pentaprison which was a big thing back in 1963 built in photoelectric exposure meeting with control visible in viewfinder 
rapid film transport mechanism lever, two focusing methods, split image and fine grain focusing ring. Um, it says the lens front element in interchangeable mount to accept ride angle and teleconverters. How much would one of these cameras cost you? Well, and if you think this book would have been two shillings, um, but the price of this camera was £96.07 shillings. Not cheap. And the Ever Ready case was £6. So it tells you what a camera it was. Bye for now.